And we're live. Hi. Hey. So today you're talking about the STM32 wireless uh, solutions. Um, so what's the latest? So yes, sure, Max. So the the purpose, you know, we uh, we started we we started yeah two or three years ago to go wireless with the uh, with the STM32. So let's say that STM32 in general is gone wireless, and the first product that we put on the market was uh, STM32 WB. So we came, we announced these products uh, 1.5 years ago, the first version of the STM32 WB, which was the STM32 WB55. And since then, we have kept on adding new products to this portfolio. And this is what we are, uh, what we keep on doing. And uh, one of the latest announcements that we made is, of course, the WB, uh, STM32 WB50. So uh, th does that mean it's like a full S MCU with in included uh, wireless uh, solutions? Is that how it works? Um, absolutely, absolutely. You have to you have to, to to see it as so. You have to see the STM32 wireless as okay. This is what we can see on this line, and if I go full screen, it's even better. You can see what we are doing. So is we take the the DNA of the STM32, and in this case, it's an STM32 L4. And we simply add a wireless pipe to this uh, to this product. So, like in the past, we were doing STM32 plus USB, STM32 plus uh, UART. Here now, you could imagine, and uh, it's, it's really to, to make it very simple, but it's an STM32 with a 2.4 gigahertz pipe. And in this case, this pipe is a BLE 5.2 or 802.15.4. So, it's it's a true MCU based on. Uh, on our DNA and all the features that you can retrieve in the STM32 portfolio. And on top, you've got the ultra low power capabilities because it's based on the STM32 L4 that you know pretty well, that is very popular on the market. So we reuse everything that we're learning on this family. We do not reinvent the wheel and we add simply uh, two modems on this, uh, on this device. So uh, this creates, a, in a simple way, the STM32 WB portfolio. So when you say two modems, uh, uh, are they? It's a lot to do with the two point four gigahertz, or like the yeah, where the both of them is, are... Wi-Fi is also in there. No, both of them. So both of them operate in the two point four gigahertz, clear. But we uh, on this device on the STM thirty two WB, we do integrate a BLE five point two modem. So so that you can understand every uh, you can uh, entertain any uh, BLE uh, let's say connections. And next to it, a 802.15.4 modem so that you can support Zigbee, for instance, OpenThread, or any proprietary uh, Mac protocol that you may want to develop. Um, so so um, uh, th this is something that everybody is asking for more and more connectivity, right? Uh, all the IoT devices want to be connected. Um, so this, like, it's a big priority for ST to do uh, some really good wireless solutions. So if you, this is a strategic axis. So if you, uh, I don't know if you had a look at the, at the uh, market, market capital day presentation made by our executive uh, a couple of uh, weeks or to, say, to not say months ago, but on STM32, you have basically three axes. So you've got uh, wireless being uh, one of them. You've got security and you've got embedded uh, AI. So here on the STM32 wireless, we go for uh, we go for BAD. This, uh, let me show you this slide. This is this is uh, sorry. This is just gathering our strategy. So the first product that we put on the market is WB. So to cover 2.4 gigahertz. Then next to it, and you had a conversation this morning with my colleague ben, uh, Benjamin. We go for sub gigahertz. So namely LoRa, Zigfox, Wireless Mbus, and any other proprietary protocols. We made the acquisition of. Uh, of, of Riot Micro uh, in July 2020 in order to come with a cellular solution within the STM32 portfolio. At the same time, we made the acquisition of uh, Bspoon to come with a solution within the STM32 portfolio with ultra wideband. And we will keep on adding new uh, or additional, uh, we'll keep on adding connectivity uh, ways to the portfolio. And it's quite easy to understand what will be the next one. But as you can see, what is our target? So we have many STM32 users. So they have developed their applications. They have 
they are using our ecosystem and what they want to do. Okay, their applications are evolving as well. In the past, they were using a wire. Now they want to go wireless and they do not want to reinvent the wheel. This is what we are bringing thanks to this STM32 wireless portfolio. You keep your ecosystem, you keep all the things that you have been doing for your application and you move from a connected application to a non-connected application depending on your use cases and on your products. This is what we bring and this is definitely what we want to bring. Uh, how would you define the demand from your users uh, in terms of cellular, getting cellular solutions? Maybe it's something that uh, they've been asking for a while and now you're bringing more and more in, in that, that area too to get more connectivity everywhere? Yes, yeah, so basically you, you may want to connect on a long range. So this is what we can do with the STM32WL, but you, you may want to do it as well so, I mean, if you do it with a WL, you are using the ISM band. So it's, you can use a, a LoRaWAN network. You can use a Sigfox network. You can uh, use different, let's say, architecture, different protocols. But you may also want to use, okay, let's rather use, uh, let's say, something which is even more established. And I want to use, uh, let's say, cellular connectivity. And namely, I want to go over NB-IoT or LTE CATM because, okay, I, I do... Uh, trust this ecosystem and so on, this business model. This is what we will bring uh, with, the, let's say, with our cellular uh, activity. Uh, so uh, here in, in your video presentation, there's, there's a, maybe she's going through all the different uh, wireless solutions that you have that maybe you talk about also on your slides. Yeah, so this is what uh, Natalie is, uh, is basically explaining. So. So we come with a wireless portfolio and even within this wireless portfolio, we come with a portfolio for every single, let's say, part of this uh, wireless portfolio. So for BLE and, uh, and Zigbee, we want to come for, with a portfolio as well. This has been one of the key axes of our success so far of the STM32. So, you know, if you take, uh, let's say, an STM32 L4, you have it from uh, 64K to, uh, to two megabytes of flash, different packages. This is exactly, we want to reuse this, uh, let's say, this uh, this success as well on the on our wireless portfolio and namely on the WB as well. So this is what we're doing here. So we come with different products. So we have the, the first one was the WB55 that you can see uh, here on this slide, uh, different Variants, so one megabyte of flash, 512 kbyte of flash, or 256 kbyte of flash. So typical, typical STM32, I would say. Diff pins package, 68 pin package, 100 pin CSP, if you want to get benefits from all the features of it, and a, a very, uh, let's say, exc exclusive industrial package, this 199, 129 pins package that allows our customers to make a two layers PCB. So this is typical for industrial customers. So they want to get all the features, but they cannot afford to get a four, six layers PCB. So this is what we're bringing. And next to this, so different type of flash, different type of packages, but also different type of products. So WB55, WB35 that you can find here. And the, yeah, I don't know if you can see my, my screen. So WB35 in 512 kbyte, only 96 kbyte of, uh, of RAM. And the other version here, 256, 96 kbyte of, uh, of RAM. And last but not least, and this is what Natalie presented in, uh, in her video, we are coming with, let's say, the, 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 the little brother of the, of the family. It's a, it's a smallest kid. This is a WB15. Uh, that covers 320 kbytes of, uh, of flash, 48 kbytes of RAM. This one, it's uh, still a dual core, so we keep our uh, architecture. So Cortex-M4 for the application, Cortex-M0 Plus driving the, the, the protocol stack. Here on this one, the WB15 is really targeting the low-end applications, so and BLE only. So uh, namely, if you want to get connected to a smartphone, you do not have to, you do not have so much to drive on your application. You do not need a USB. Fair enough. This is what you can do with a, with a WB15. That will be available in 48 pins package and actually two type of 48 pins package because you've got a 48 pins package that is fully compatible with the rest of the portfolio and you will get an extended one where you can get a, a few more GPIOs. So as you see, 
a complete portfolio and something that is really unprecedented for uh, for STM32, we come with a module, a pre-certified module. Ah, sorry. Uh, so if you yeah. are, if you there as you a are. customer yeah. uh, are not, no problem. Yeah. yeah, it's working now. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, we, we do come with a uh, with a pre-certified module. So if you customer are not so keen on uh, on tuning uh, RF, tuning the crystal, and so on, we do come with a pre-certified module. What does it mean? So within uh, let's say a design. So it's a, a very small let's say PCB, you've got everything inside. You've got the crystals, uh, you've got the WB55 and CSP100 package. So this means that you have access to all the beams and you can do it. And you, you can you can develop your application in even two layers or four layers, but you, you do not have to deal with, uh, let's say the troubles of uh, RF. Everything is integrated. You take it, you plug it, you develop your application, done. Your application is connected to BLE or to uh, 802.15.4 or to both because we do support on all our products and many of the two modems is a famous concurrent mode. And so, uh, okay. uh, you, come... you talk, you're talking about platform also, like um, the you were mentioning the the whole support is like a, it's coming from the the whole history of the ST support and and with the from wireless to all the other MCUs. Yes, this is a, this is completely supported. So this this device is part of the of the STM32 portfolio. So as such, is supported by the STM32 team. Uh, like uh, if you if you take uh, STM32 L4, F, F4, uh, G0, you've got the WB next to it or the WL, and this is supported by the same teams. Uh, of course, this team has been uh, have been increased by uh, new talents. Uh, with a with a very strong background in uh, RF uh, stuff, but we have staffed ourselves in order to support our our dear customers in this uh, journey of wireless connectivity. And maybe Roman, if you are in if you are in the in the discussion, you may want to say something on the support on our support capabilities. Hi, Roman. Hey, hello, everybody. <laughs> nice to be with you again. So, of course, uh, you know uh, the products are nice. Um, uh, the portfolio is huge. Uh, uh, but together with this, uh, also the complexity uh, and the time to market uh, is, is changing. So the complexity of the application and uh, the pressure on all the designers uh, to finish their design as soon as possible is, is clearly there. So together with the product, uh, we have to bring um, not only the, the libraries and proper documentation, uh, we try to bring uh, additional resources uh, like, uh, like uh, trainings, workshops, uh, uh, digital materials, videos that can help uh, our customers uh, to guide them through the journey of evaluation down to, to the certification of, the, of their final product. And uh, you, you also have a colleague here talking about uh, some of that those tools or? Yes, there is still end with us. Uh, so of course, uh, I will be happy to, to have him spend a word on it. Uh, maybe before uh, giving in the space, uh, uh, one point on uh, dedicated to RF. Uh, we do have dedicated uh, RF laboratory in our ST office in Prague. Uh, and in this one, we can help customers, uh, let's say, with the uh, antenna selection, antenna fine tuning, even with some pre-certification tests uh, on, uh, on the products that Charmark has described. So this is a big benefit for any customer who doesn't want to invest immediately in a certification authority, but would like to have a first feedback on his design. It's, it's very important to have a product that actually connects and you, you don't want to have too much interference. You want to test, get exactly that the, there's like hundreds of different antennas that you can customize, choose the cable, how long and everything, and right? It's like this, yeah. It's not no more simple like connecting, uh, you know, two devices over the UART. So when it comes to analog and RF, uh, there are a lot of uh, tricky points and uh, you need expensive tools very often to understand what's happening uh, uh, around uh, your antenna and uh, between the two connected devices. Uh, and this is where we come and we can help. And we do have a resources, experienced teams that uh, can help customers uh, move on with their designs. And I guess it's uh, completely different when you go cellular compared to testing uh, the low energy Bluetooth, right? Uh, this maybe, then you have to actually of test course. outside in the, in the 
in the cities or in the everywhere? Well, well yes, uh, the, each of the, each of the system, each of the protocols, and of the of the bands has uh, specificities, right? So we do have customer cases like on the Lora, where uh, I, I remember that uh, they ask us to go in the basement of uh, like a twenty store storage building, and you know we were in the basement, they were in the twenty floor, and we were doing we were doing some some tests uh, on on the benchmark level to prove that uh, our technology is the right one for the application. Uh, but these are more like a field test uh, with our laboratory equipment. Uh, we can really help on the on the laboratory level uh, to optimize uh, the output power and uh, the emissions uh, to to reach the best efficiency in the field at the end. Uh, so maybe would you like to introduce uh, Tilan? Of course. So Tilan, please uh, jump in and tell us something about uh, uh, the remaining uh, block between uh, the micro and the support, uh, which is uh, the ecosystem. Uh... Hi to all. So Hi. this is Tilen speaking. Uh, thanks for uh, being with, I mean, thanks for invitation to be with you. Yes, so um, ecosystem, uh, there is a lot about ecosystem in the, let's say, development of any, any project, okay? So let's say the recent uh, surveys done by, let's say, independent um, company, okay? shows that, uh, let's say, if, if the customers have to compare um, what is the most important for them when they decide for the new project, is it, uh, let's say, some of them are in love with the vendor itself, the company. Some of them, let's say, they like the product itself. Doesn't really matter which uh, vendor. And some of them, they like ecosystem. The results show that, uh, let's say, two-thirds, so 60 to 70% of the developers demand strong ecosystem. <laughs> To, to develop their application, you know, to feel comfortable. And in this regard, uh, STM, uh, ST has stm 32 cube ecosystem. I can, in fact, maybe show, share my screen. Yeah. I have one presentation. Maybe you okay, have I'm it. sharing. Yeah. There is your screen. Okay, so this is, let's say, one, one slide uh, giving the overall picture of, the, of our ecosystem. So the, let's say on the left side, we can, have, we can talk about the software tools. So those are the tools you usually install on your computer. And on the left side, sorry, on the right side, you have the um, firmware or embedded software uh, offer. So let's first focus on the left side. So these are the software tools. Basically, um, there is a, let's say, normal cycle of the development. So from the microcontroller, let's say, selection, finding the right product that will fit your application. Uh, then there is, a, let's say, some initial configuration, uh, project development, so kind of writing C, C++ code, or let's say also some uh, different ones. Uh, there is some debugging thing, uh, let's say, monitoring thing, and let's say, cl uh, project closure. So there is a, we can call it a round uh, natural way of development of every project the customer every customer has now at st we have let's say tools that are necessary to handle everything with only st tools so you don't need to use any third party tool to be successful with stm32 so there are four of them listed we start with basically with the cubemix um, that is a configurator tool so graphical configurator tool uh, also supporting um, um, let's say many new, many features, and some of them uh, are, have been introduced in 2020, such as support for dual core devices, support for uh, devices with Cortex M33, where you have trust zone, where security is a key concern. Um, also, because of one of the main advantages of our ecosystem is to grow it. Okay, so let our developers, our customers, to contribute to our ecosystem. The Cuba Mix can. You know, it's very famous because it generates the code from graphical configuration. In fact, it can also generate the code from user bricks. So use, uh, users, customers, developers, they can put inside their own piece of code and the QMX will successfully generate the project. Uh, so it will add their code into the end project um, before this code is further developed and somehow compiled. Then there is a second tool, uh, which we call CubeID. Okay, so this is integrated development environment that in fact also includes Cubemix functionality inside. So basically to develop your application, the only thing you need to download from ST is the Cube ID. And that's enough. So you don't need to download the, uh, 
if you decide to go with Cube ID, you don't need to download Cubemix. At this point, I would like to mention also that we don't, certainly we don't limit um, any customer uh, the way they want to go. So they can take Cube ID, they can take a um, solution from our partners, such as Kyle Microvision or uh, IR Embedded Workbench, or simply, let's say, make make file and uh, develop their own, their project in any ID, even Notepad++ or standard Notepad <laughs> that you get on the Windows. So this is, uh, we call, I mean, the Cube ID is a debugger, code, um, right, so, so supports uh, writing the code, debugging, and compiling. The third one, which you see on the list, is the Cube Programmer. This is a tool that lets you to flash the microcontroller. So you have to download the flash somehow, you have to configure the option bytes, um, and this kind of thing. So somehow you have to transfer the code to the micro. This is done with the Cube Programmer. Uh, it also supports advanced features such as um, secure firmware installation. So this is, um, let's say, proprietary way how our customers can benefit um, from ST offer to program the their, let's say, intellect intellectual property in the so-called non-secure environment. So if you have a third-party company doing programming for you and you are not really sure if you can trust uh, them uh, to give them the plain firmware or plain uh, binary, you can propose secure firmware installation so that you deliver encrypted binary and the queue programmer uh, plus the bootloader running on the microcontroller will decode encrypted binary on the fly inside the microcontroller and then securely uh, flash it. So this is also what queue programmer allows. Last but not least here, um, queue monitor. This is, the, let's say, very last thing at uh, during the project development stage, where you have to verify if your application is behaving properly. So maybe you you can have some glitches in the software um, which are not somehow um, immediately visible. Let's say maybe they occur once, twice per uh, per hour or something like that, or once per day. And using the cube monitor, which you attach to the microcontroller, you can fetch the data constantly. So you can read the RAM, uh, the RAM memory, or even flash. And you can, let's say, lock the events that are maybe hazardous, that are not in line with your expectation. So therefore, you can use this tool to verify long-term application stability. And then you can decide if everything is OK or not. This tool is also based on web technology. So we are using Node-RED behind. Um, it's a unique feature because it allows customers to, to benefit from Node-RED community. Uh, they, it's a JavaScript behind anyway. Uh, so they can add their own widgets, they can connect to the cloud, and uh, so on. So there are many options that our customers can do with our software tools, so the left part of the ecosystem. Uh, just before you were saying that the Cubemix is like famous because it's uh, you have you have tools that just takes graphical, that basically no coding uh, required to get some code done. Is that also part of the of the offering here? This is so. This is exactly what is the what is the point. Huh? So taking the Cubemix, you can really uh, accelerate your project development because it's uh, you just open the tool. The first thing it asks you to select the microcontroller, the one you will work with, or board. We also let you to you know we have the maybe I have someone some here somewhere. Um, Okay, I don't have next to me any board. Yeah. So we have the, the, the development board, such as Nucleo board, Discovery board. And uh, you can take this one as a start point for your project. And then you enter the cube, uh, the cube mix window. You see the microcontroller in the middle. You see list of the peripherals on the left side. You can click, let's say, I want to, to configure the UART. You click on UART, let's say UART2. You configure the board rate. Um, and you simply click on generate the code. And then the code is generated, and um, you uh, you are effectively enabling the UART in your end application. So basically, taking five to ten clicks, you've been able to have UART in your application. This is much faster versus taking the reference manual uh, and reading every bit and byte of the registers of the microcontrollers. That's why it's very famous because it really accelerates the development of your um, let's say end project. Okay, uh, UART was maybe not the best example because it's pretty 
simple peripheral, but if you look at uh, other things, much complex ones, such as DMA2D, LTDC, um, and so on, DSI peripherals, display serial interface, where the things get far more complicated, it really benefits to the end customer. So, uh, so I guess this means this is a, is a big deal over the last uh, two, three years. Maybe the developments that you've been doing in ST is providing like uh, the next level of tools uh, for all the, the, the ecosystem. And this is like a big leap or? Uh, certainly. So in, in our uh, microcontroller division, let's say the, the ecosystem team, uh, or yes, the software development team and, 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 and embedded, sorry, uh, development team, we have like uh, 300 people doing only this. So the team, the team is pretty big. So I'm talking here about the software and firmware, so the left and uh, right part. And they have, let's say it's a full-time job, we can say, doing just this. And uh, the Cubemix uh, is available since 2014. Okay. Since then it was massively improved and we still and we are still improving it, okay? Um, and we will continue to work on it uh, in the future because it's really the, the, main, the main target. How, so how would you define we that? Remind, we should, yeah, sorry, please go ahead. Yeah. We should keep in mind the motto of STM32, which is uh, STM32 releasing your creativity. So at the end, we want our customers to focus on the applications. They do not have to learn how our register works and so on. This is not, this is not our target. So we provide them with everything that they need and they develop their, their application. And it's yes. important to make things easier every every year, every embedded world, every, everything gets easier for all the, the whole ecosystem. Exactly. So uh, like, like Jean-Marc said, so the purpose of the, the QMX, QBID, and all these, let's say, graphical con configuration tools is that we let you focus on your application and you don't need to spend time so much reading the reference manuals to understand how every bit works in the STM32. This is the this is the main target of the tools. And you also yes, talk, uh, sorry, I interrupted. Uh, you also talking about uh, custom implementation. When people have a new idea, they want to do something custom, then you, you also provide the full kind of like window into that world where people can really customize something specific. Yes, so what I was in fact talking about is uh, let's say support for so-called expansion packages. Okay, so this you can see on the right side, on the bottom right. Okay, you see STM32 cube expansions. And these are the, the firmware packages, uh, usually named X-cube or I-cube, uh, and then something. Um, and the let's say the starting the Cubemix version 6.0, and last week we, by the way, released 6.2, um, the Cubemix can import expansion package, of course, if, if it's properly designed. Okay, and then when you configure the graphical your project, you can also select the expansion package to be included in your project during the code generation. Okay, and if the package is well well prepared based on our let's say Cube ecosystem standards, how to create your expansion package, um, then the customer can also graphically configure this expansion pack. So let's say I have expansion pack called uh, printf debugging, okay, which is working through UART. If you enable this expansion pack, the, the customer can decide, let's say, which UART of the microcontroller should I use as an output for my debugging expansion pack. So it's really everything is graphically configurable. Uh, so Roman, uh, uh, we can see you. Maybe, maybe you can say... Um... Uh, something about what what you think is the uh, the the feedback from from users from your ecosystem in what you've been able to do over the last uh, since we were doing booth tours three years ago uh, I think maybe it was four years ago uh, the first uh, like it's it's a lot of new stuff not a lot of new tools right well yeah I think there is a there is a huge uh, evolution and a big effort uh, behind. Uh, but why all this? It's really because of our customers. Uh, I think uh, uh, the beauty of all this is that we, we listen uh, to customers uh, and we, we digest the, their feedback. And I think good example is if I look back uh, six, seven years ago when, uh, when I, as a designer, wanted to start with STM32 and I wanted to make a, a configuration of the clock tree, which sometimes uh, could be a bit complex, uh, I had to download a specific Excel file and start to fill in there some, some constants and it was generating for me uh, you know, some configurations and it was very heavy to, uh, to start. 
today, uh, like Tilan explained, I simply opened the Cubemix. There is a pre-configured setup uh, and in a nice, let's say, Windows uh, kind of style, I can change the configuration. I can set what uh, input frequencies and what output frequencies I want to have. And it will calculate for me automatically all the, the PLLs, uh, dividers, multipliers uh, to make my configuration correct. So there are tools which can really help uh, the customers to uh, minimize their, their time on this so they can focus with their time on their added value. So how they use the product in their application, uh, bringing some, let's say, more energy efficient applications or more attractive uh, applications for uh, final customers. And the final customers is me, you, Charbax, it's Jarmark, it's Tilen, because uh, uh, we are buying uh, new things, uh, uh, new home appliances, uh, new security systems and all this. And this is where uh, you find the STM32 today. Uh, would you uh, would you explain a little bit what's um, the atmosphere uh, of the past year at uh, ST? Uh, like uh, I guess maybe some people like working from home, or it's also mm -hmm. maybe like the I, I guess productivity at uh, at ST is not slowed down, right? Even the embedded world is not physical. Mm. So for sure, the, the the whole world changed uh, drastically. Yeah, it's it's uh, basically one year uh, since we started to face this. Uh, and much in Europe. And I remember when we decided not to be present at Embedded World uh, 2020 and uh, okay, uh, it passed. Uh, now for sure we, we adapted as, as much as we could. Um, I can also bring a few examples. Uh, you know, every day we are developing uh, and delivering to our customers a series of uh, one day technical workshops uh, on different subjects uh, such as um, how to use STM32 MP1, uh, how to develop the BLE uh, application with STM32 WB, how to develop as uh, secure boot, secure firmware, uh, upgrade and install uh, for your application. So all these things uh, we were used to uh, bring to our customers in face-to-face -face workshops. So we were meeting in our offices or in different hotel meeting rooms across Europe. Last year, it was not possible, uh, but basically over two or three months, we have adapted uh, to remote workshops and we keep delivering them uh, using uh, the, the remote platforms, uh, including hands-on ex exercises, uh, means that we are shipping to our customers uh, the boards that they need to use for, for the hands-on examples. And we don't want to stop because we know that that's important uh, in, in daily life uh, for the designers to learn and practice new things. All right, and people can watch all these videos on your YouTube channel where you are showing a lot of uh, cool stuff. This is the uh, wireless video maybe that, but I, I mean, there's, there's many different things and people can watch your embedded world uh, content. Correct. Uh, yes, so uh, it's not only this embedded world, but uh, for all the workshop uh, that we are delivering, uh, we make sure that the content is at the end available in the digital form on our YouTube channel. Uh, so people can come back to it or can find it at any point. Uh, they are not really linked to the workshop dates. Uh, and um, just to tell you some numbers, uh, last year, uh, the amount of uh, view hours of those uh, technical uh, videos uh, was reaching uh, 30,000 uh, hours, uh, which is impressive. And uh, it uh, only underlined that a lot of uh, people are relying on them uh, to, to see how they can use the product or how they can develop specific uh, uh, application uh, points uh, with STM32. Uh, without trying to uh, uh, announce the future or secrets or something like that, but would you like to say a little bit, uh, Tilen, Roman, uh, Jean-Marc, about uh, what, what, is, what are your users wanting for the future? And maybe you have like, I, I'm sure you have a huge roadmap and uh, there's, there's just more and more stuff that can be optimized, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, like I said, like I said, I would say security, uh, <laughs> connectivity, uh, uh, lower power, more performance, and uh, embedded AI. This is on In one side, second. yes. yes. Yeah. This is on one yeah. side. So, yeah. on the on the ecosystem side, um, there is always room for improvement. <clears throat> and in fact, what I didn't yet mention. Um, is that so starting in last year we made an agreement with microsoft okay we did let's say this week uh, already uh, announcement on this uh, so because we are bringing the the asia ertos support for 
uh, so I will go to the next slide. So we are bringing the Azure Airto support for STM32 directly into the STM32 cube. As I mentioned before, um, X cube packages or so expansion packages can be added to our cube MX, cube ID. And this is the way how we are delivering this incredible piece of uh, middleware offer. So Azure Airtos uh, coming with four important um, and industry leading middlewares. So we are talking about the operating system Tradix, uh, file system, FAT file system, FileX, um, NetX for the TCP IP and USBX. So all this is giving you industry certifications, industry leading uh, middleware, uh, let's say uh, low, uh, low footprint, high performance. And on the other side, let's say, uh, goes tightly with our strategy on the security. For example, Netix supports all the security features you would normally need in connectivity with the cloud. Uh, for example, this is just uh, one thing. And uh, we started with uh, deployment to STM32H7, our highest performance microcontroller. And during the 20, uh, 2021 full year, we will deliver also for other existing STM32 such, such package. So our customers will really benefit uh, massively on, on this middleware part of our um, embedded firmware solution. Is it uh, uh, accelerating how people are adopting a cloud on the MCU market? Over the past year, there's more and more in this kind of uh, way. Maybe you need AI to also not send all the data up to the cloud, but only take some of it and all that stuff. Okay, so uh, okay, if we if we tackle this AI topic, um, I would like to say one thing. Uh, so there is a Azure Airtos and there is a Azure Cloud. So the people are usually mixing these things, okay? Because the um, Azure is just uh, okay. First of all, it's a Microsoft branding for the cloud, while the Azure Airtos is the operating system or let's say set of middlewares around the operating system, which has in fact nothing to do with the cloud. So the only thing they have in common is the name, okay? So um, if you want to use, let's say, Azure Airtos, it doesn't need to be for the purpose to connect to the Azure cloud. This is the first thing uh, everyone has to keep in mind. So you can use the Azure Airtos for simple applications that are only the local one, do not have any connectivity around. Um, this is a very important thing that we have to um, expose to our customers. All right, but I guess it's uh, it's got to be a big deal also that Microsoft uh, invests to, to help make all the the RTOS development uh, more optimized, better better IoT. They also hope people will use more of the cloud eventually, also, right? And this uh, is yeah. Okay, so yeah, okay, this is certainly one of the strategy of the Microsoft. So they, in fact, they acquired uh, Express Logic company, so the U.S. based company. Uh, who is uh, on the market, I think, since uh, 1998, something like that, at least 20 years. So their, uh, let's say, middleware offer was always number one. And uh, they are claiming to have the 7 billion devices uh, equipped uh, on the field with their middleware offer. So today, this one is called um, Azure Airtos. In the past, it was called Express Logic Software. So it's really, for Microsoft, this is one strategy. To, to somehow, let's say, make a, let's a closer, closer way for the customer to use their cloud. All right. Uh, thanks a lot. Oh, Roman, what do you think? Uh, do, do you think there's some topics we didn't cover, we should cover on this video? Um, yeah, so maybe to, to also complement a little bit uh, to your question on what's coming in the future. So, uh, like like, like Jean-Marc already said, be sure that our development teams are let's say working hardly in, in several directions uh, and the important domains are indeed RF and uh, I think ST have uh, shown with a couple of acquisitions last year, uh, the directions. Uh, so this is definitely where, where we are acting uh, and we will bring products uh, uh, for those, um, let's say in, in coming uh, months. And then in terms of ecosystem, uh, and I, when I was speaking about the workshops and Tilen mentioned the, the Azure Artus, Artus story, uh, so what I can disclose that this year in 2021, the, the major workshop campaign that we will bring to our customers starting, um, let's say, end of May. Uh, so very likely still remotely, unfortunately, uh, but let's see, uh, will be exactly about uh, how uh, to use Azure Artos together with STM32 
and how uh, simple it will be uh, thanks to its integration inside the STM32Cube MX, allowing the customers uh, in an easy clickable way to include uh, those components like NetX or USBX, uh, including some initial initialization uh, directly in the first phase of project generation. So they don't have to download several packages from GitHub and then you know start first compilation with uh, 105 errors and uh, you know spending a lot of time just uh, bringing the things together. They will be integrated by us, so a uh, customer would be able to start using them right away. That's the the key point. Uh, there's one question uh, uh, saying Azure Artas uh, thumbs up, and uh, how about uh, Zephyr? Artas. Uh, last year, I was doing a, a video with Zephyr talking about big uh, adoption. How do you, 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 you just want to support everything or how do you, how do you figure out how to support, what to support? So the, okay, I can comment this. So the, our, let's say our primary, primary goal, okay, primary target to support will be certainly Azure Ertos. That's why we did the, the agreement with, uh, with the Microsoft. Okay. And we will have the full Let's say all, all our support capabilities will be focused on this. Nevertheless, we are not, let's say, putting aside the Zephyr. Okay, so there we still have a, a, at least one eye, one and a half eye on Zephyr. Okay, we even have a people in the microcontroller division that are contributing to Zephyr. So in order, you know, to 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 have the STM32 boards supported there, like the Nucleo Discovery board, so that the customers who are trying to use Zephyr, they can go to the official uh, GitHub, Zephyr uh, OS GitHub account. They download it, they start it with STM32. So this is certainly possible. Uh, we are not, let's say, blocking our customers against using uh, Zephyr. Just, let's say, more resources today we are putting on, on Microsoft Azure Ertos. Well, in the f what will happen in the future, I cannot say, uh, but if there will be a strong, strong, um, uh, let's say usage and demand around Zephyr. Okay, we we might let's say reconsider our strategy and focus on Zephyr uh, much more uh, versus what we do today. All right, uh, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Jean-Marc. If there's anything you wanted to say more, you let me know. Or Roman, uh, uh, the, just that I mean, keep the faith in STM32. We, uh, I mean, we 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 keep on developing to support your applications. This is the most important thing that you can rely on us to develop your own applications. So we do not develop microcontrollers or microprocessors for our own pleasure. We do it for you, our customers. All right. So thanks a lot. Thanks thanks for your time. And thanks everybody Thank for you. watching. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe last one, uh, you. Connect to us, connect to our engineers on Embedded World. So you still have two days. So Thursday and Friday, uh, they are all there. We have up to 100 engineers uh, from STM32, U5, you know, the, the new addition, adaption to our families, WB, WL, ecosystem. Uh, whatever question you, you may have uh, today with your designs or for the future, connect to us, speak to us. Uh, our people make themselves available. So use this. Uh, we cannot meet face to face, but we are there remotely for you. And you're actually so, famous for giving away boards, right, at these kinds of events. And uh, this <laughs> might be happening here too. Or how do you, this, there's a lot of boards, so many, like you have so many boards uh, and people can just buy them for affordable prices on your website? Uh, yeah, th this is true. So like every year, uh, remember uh, when we met physically on Embedded Board, uh, sometimes there were even uh, people queuing in the lines uh, for the board. Uh, uh, we see, uh, you know, the development boards like Nucleo or Discovery Kids as a as an important element for every engineer who wants to start uh, playing with any component. And uh, for sure, we want to make this easy uh, for our customers. Uh, and not only customers; uh, these boards are available for students, for geeks, for makers, basically anyone who would like to put his hands uh, and play with STM32. And uh, this year it's the same. So uh, even though we cannot distribute the boards face to face to the people uh, at the Nuremberg Messe, uh, we have decided and dedicated nearly 5,000 boards that people can either register for and um, we will have a kind of lucky lottery at the end of the event. Uh, and the other way to get the board is to talk to me, talk to Tilen, talk to Jean-Marc or uh, all the 100 colleagues that are on the Toki platform of Embedded. Uh, let's talk to us about your project and uh, we'll be happy to offer you uh, one of the still available STM32 boards. And there are some cool ones, I can tell you. 
people can maybe comment, right? They can comment on the, on your YouTube videos, on this video. They can and and see what try to connect and see. Yes, uh, please. Uh, anyone who is interested, uh, go to uh, embeddedword.de, uh, uh, and then there is a navigation how to obtain the ticket, uh, and then on board the so-called Toki platform of the Embedded World Twenty One Digital. Uh, the platform is relatively cool. We can chat uh, in between each other. Uh, so uh, yeah, connect to us, uh, and uh, you can find uh, ST people divided by experts on RF ecosystem, uh, high performance, low power, uh, MEM sensors, uh, motor control, AI, uh, you know, automotive. So really, we have people there for um, a lot of uh, major market or product segments, uh, and find us there and talk to us. Uh, it, it will pay off for you. Cool. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks. Before before we close, yeah. I really have to <laughs> expose one thing because about <laughs> around the ecosystem, we can really talk two days or more. So for those that, who will not join anyway, the, the embedded world, um, March 16, and this is already available on ST. So March 16, we are preparing the webinar around how easy it is with the CubeMX and Azure Airtos expansion pack to start your new project or add, let's say, Tradix into the existing project of you. So we will be live demonstrating uh, at least 30 minutes, technical demo, uh, this solution. So March 16 at uh, 3 p.m. Central European time will be live webinar. Registration is for free, so feel free to, to go to st.com and register there. And I guess your tools are free, right? Or people can just get on online, is it true? Everything, Everything I just is free. presented free. Free and then people can just play with it even without a board, right? They can start, yes. Okay, so uh, they can compile, they can generate the code to play with the with the GUI, and then they, the only thing they cannot do is debug and flash to the micro because they don't have it. But right. if they are on the embedded board and they speak with uh, with me, Roman, or Jean-Marc, they can even get the board. I have much more boards than you. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you very much for, for this tour. Of, yeah, thank uh, you. Thank you.